Welcome to the Paywall Podcast, where we discuss paywalls and paywall strategies for news and magazine publishers. This episode of the Paywall Podcast is brought to you by Leaky Paywall. Leaky Paywall is the most flexible WordPress subscription platform. Find out more at leakypaywall.com. And now for today's episode. Today, we're going to talk about three ways that AI will shake up your reader revenue and how to take advantage of it. Welcome, Tyler. Welcome back to the Paywall Podcast. Nice to have you here. Hello, hello. Ready to talk about artificial intelligence, chat GPT, and how it will affect. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. So a uh, big part of the news, and I'm going to just jump into um, uh, what's going on in the news here is Time Magazine. They announced that they were going to stop uh, paid subscriptions. And I'm kind of picking on Time a little bit um, as a what you should not do in the publishing world as far as publishing news. And Hey, we were a longtime print subscriber of Time Magazine. Fantastic publication. Loved reading it. Um, but the digital world, unfortunately, doesn't fit um, with the model that Time sort of brought from print to digital. They decided to go broad with their uh, news stories and going broad with your news uh, in today's internet where it's all about the niche uh is a really a rough road so they drop their paywall they're going to lean into advertising not sure what the heck is going on there because ad revenues are not going up for digital publishers they are going the opposite way in general as a trend um so we could talk about time and what they should have done uh, but it sort of segues into uh my first point about you know Let's talk a little bit about AI. Well, what 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 is AI and, and what does it do? Um, it's a way of automating um, lots of simple um, and somewhat complicated uh, things that you would do as a publisher. Content being, you know, creation of content is one of them, and. That's probably the biggest, I don't know what you see, Tyler, but I think that's sort of the biggest application right now is you can type something into chat GPT and say, hey, write me a story about this or write an article about that. And it will just do it and it'll produce an okay article and the grammar will be good and that's fine. But it's not inspiring. It's not personal. It's it's a bot. And you can get really good at it and feed it prompts that, that let you output better and better uh, content. But the problem with with AI and publishing right now is that if you're in a if you're in a broad segment and you're producing lots of sort of gen, more general broad articles, AI is going to eat your lunch. Um, your your really your your best bet as far as producing content is to go the opposite direction that time is going, and that's niche down. That's create content that is super tight and relevant around a very narrow topic area. So what's a very narrow topic area? How about local news? I'd say that's a very narrow topical area. Um, you're covering uh, what's happening in your town, in your area. That's it. Nothing else. Maybe you're the best at it. Hopefully you're the best at it. How does AI impact? Let's say I start up an AI uh, news publishing uh, business and I'm going to go tackle um, Morganton, West Virginia. And you were a publisher, Tyler. What would you do? Well, so I've got a publisher. Let me just start with this. I've got a publisher, I believe, in the suburbs of Chicago, um, who's actually using AI as mm. a tool for generating content. Uh, they don't use it a lot, um, but it's interesting. You're talking about the broad content uh area that's where they're using it that's right Pre precisely it's helping uh them do research on these broader topics that aren't necessarily um their wheelhouse and mm -hmm. so uh, i think one story in particular in particular was about gun control or something and they were talking about the broader 
issues around guns in America and, and all that. And um, uh, they were using AI to help them do some of the background reporting on it. And then they were localizing, uh, you know, that uh, the context around that. So that's kind of where I see as far as local news goes, using it for background and research. And then uh, obviously you're, gonna, you're still going have to have to do the local news reporting on the ground. And you're still going to have to fact check all the stuff that those AI bots throw out at you. So it's not like you can just throw in some prompts and assume that everything in it is true. It might sound great and look great, but mm. AI is only as good as um, the data that we have out there. And so it's, you know, proceed with caution, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Well, it's, I mean, it's the, the, the dawn of the computer has always been garbage in garbage out. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, the human, um, it's almost like a magnifying glass, right? Like sounds like they're using it for, let's say an article on gun control. And that's mm -hmm. a very, that's a focused article. It's kind of broad, but it's, it's a focused topic. Mm -hmm. And then using AI to do the research behind that article. I think that's, that's a great tool. That's, that's a time saving tool. Yeah. Any, any tool that saves you time today is, is a win. Yeah. And they're very explicit too, about this article was generated with the help of, or with the support of you know, chat GPT or whatever labor mm -hmm. of AI that they're using. So right. uh, I think that's also an important part of it. If you do plan to add AI to your workflow, right. and especially as a local news publisher or even a regional or, or national publisher, uh, you should probably be letting people know that this content is generated by, by AI, but, you know, you're, you're also fact checking it and, and making sure that it's, that it's accurate because Obviously, at the end of the day, that's that's yeah. what the job is as a, as a journalist. So be, tra be transparent mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's a tool. I, I got into a discussion with Colleen, my wife, and we were talking about. I had written an article with the help of AI um, as a kind of a, a parody on publishing, and she really liked it. <laughs> and then uh, then I told her I used AI to. You know, I was very specific about the prompts that, that was going to build up the skeleton of the story. So I basically wrote the skeleton of the story and then had the AI create the story. It's almost like hiring a writer. And I pay for chat GPT-4 and, and it works really, really well. Um, she was pretty horrified about it. <laughs> it was the AI story. Um, so, you know, if I had told her up front, hey, AI, you know, I had I wrote a story with AI, um, that reaction probably would have been a little different. Yeah. Then, would have known coming in that 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 was that way yeah yeah so um so i'm just getting back to so if you're in a niche and you're and you're niching down on your um on your content and could be could be local news or could be um maybe maybe you write about gun control gun control yeah. maybe that's yeah. your niche maybe you write about uh fishing in you know uh massachusetts that's your niche Mm -hmm. uh, use the use AI. Yes, you can create it. You can use it for content creation, but you got to be careful because it does. It's not as good as what you can write yourself. But the research side, I think that's a great. That's yeah. a great point. Uh, yeah. 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 So, okay. So niche down. Stick to your niche. You know, we think about especially local news. Like you absolutely need to focus on your local area. Like that. It's it's almost. You know, some of the most successful news publishers that, that that have you know local or regional newspapers, you know, the rule is if it's if it's out of bounds, if it's out of your town, you know, if a nuclear bomb goes off next door, you don't write about it. I mean, I know it's a little extreme, but you write about what's going on in your town. You mention people in your town. You draw your readers into yeah. it, and that segues into um, that. Then my next point, the second point. So. Niching down, yes, you have your expertise, you build your walls around that, but now you also get to build a relationship and strengthen your the relationship with your audience. And I think this is going to hurt magazine publishers a lot that aren't, that are still really focused on advertising and haven't embraced reader revenue yet, uh, which is a big chunk of, of magazine publishers. But um 
okay, you can crank out a lot of content using AI and it's maybe not going to be great. Maybe if you're really good at it, it's going to be great. And that's, that's okay too, as long as you're upfront about it. But that relationship, and this is, again, this is something that every publisher knows. Yes, we want to, uh, we need to please the readers to some level. I think news publishers really lean in on that reader relationship and magazine publishers really don't lean in on the reader relationship for the most part. Some do, the ones we work with do, and it's paying off big time. But um, many are really focused on leaning into the relationship with their advertisers and at the peril of ignoring their readers. Uh, and I'm not saying they completely ignore their readers, but advertisers are, are driving driving the the train, then um, you got to be you got to be really careful because those readers are going to are going to evaporate if you don't really, really take care of them. And so the the relationship between the publisher and the reader, I think, becomes even more important than it already is. And it's super important now. But with AI, you have a brand, right? Um, you have, um, you know, you have ways to connect directly with your reader, the, the newsletter being the big one. And of course, you have your, you know, your mission and vision and and your focus um, and all that. But I think leaning into that relationship, um, making sure your newsletter, um, you know, is personal, it really. You're, yeah, your business, but it's personal. We connect with humans. Um, making sure you're 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 building that list with a free registration, which we talk about a lot super important and that will help uh create a moat around your publication the bigger your audience and this is where everyone agrees magazine news publishers niche publishers everyone wants a bigger audience that is like a universal truth and so working on capturing those casual readers and growing that list and putting you in control of you know communicating directly with them and then once you get that straightened out um, you know, you look at, well, some, I don't know, uh, Tyler, if you see publishers that are leaning into commenting, you know, like if you're running subscriptions, that's a great opportunity to let subscribers, you know, talk <laughs> about your articles, comment, mm -hmm. engage with each other for better or for worse. Um, but if you're a paid, if you're, if you've delivered a credit card, and you're given the ability to comment. Most most of most of those uh, subscribers tend to play nicely, from what I've seen so far. Oh, for sure. Especially if the only way that you can comment is whether or not you pay it or not. I mean, that's a a yeah. great screener, and obviously your name is attached to the comment. So, yep. Um, yeah, that's a great. Uh, I've got a couple of publishers who are running comments, and for the most part, it's you know it's not a big deal i mean there yeah. there is the occasional blow up but for right. the most part it's right it's it's totally fine yeah it's a great engagement tool um social engagement is a motivator for for paying subscriptions and if you're if you have delivered your in information and a credit card number you tend to you tend to not be a total jerk <laughs> <Can I put? laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, one thing I, I wanted to add, this is going to sound probably super simple and uh, maybe maybe obvious, uh, but as far as like personalizing uh, the experience, mm -hmm. one thing that I do with all of my publishers from the very beginning when they come on board is making sure that they have uh, photos, uh, avatars mm -hmm. of all of their authors that show up in the stories. So mm -hmm. like I want to see you know, Jane Smith and John Doe, like I want to see their photo and the local news story. So just a small little thing that you could do in your spare time, um, personalizing the overall experience. And it helps. I mean, the publishers that do it and have nice photos, I mean, it helps. You know, I've seen, I've seen, we've worked with larger publishers that don't have their act together on staff photos and it's an effort. I get it. It's an effort, but it's, it's really important. And the, the ones that are really brilliant at it inject some fun into it. Like I remember I, I politics, like if you go to their site, they mm -hmm. have like the serious like staff photo. And then if you roll mouse over the photo, it turns into their, you know, super goofy, 
you know, <laughs> like super personal. Like I, I love cats. So I got a cat or I, I, right. I got my, I got my uh, motorcycle helmet on cause I like to ride bikes or whatever it is, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. makes it more personal, but that's part of the engagement. It's really yeah. important. Mm -hmm. Super important. Um, uh, new tools like subtext where you can send SMS messages to your readers directly and they can SMS you back and you can and manage that through a dashboard um, adds personalization and actually adds a, um, a whole additional revenue channel for you to take it that far. And that, you know, that engagement with email messaging, um, you know, being personal, commenting, uh, I don't know if I forgot anything, but those things will build your moat and keep people, you know, attract and keep people with you as a publisher, regardless of how crazy AI gets. And I'd say, I'd say the time is now, you know, we sort of leads me into, into one of my next points is we get comments from publishers about like search, like dropping off, like, oh, AI is going to take over Google search or, or, you know, we're, you're going to get like, you're going to, we're all using AI to search for stuff. Well, that's not really true. We yeah, have maybe a little bit, mostly AI is like information generation and content creation. And like you said, research. Um, and the, the reality is, is like back to time, like time is becoming more and more important as, as things accelerate. And we still, you know, like when we approach the website, we're scanners, right? Like we're, we don't really read content. We're not ready for big blocks of content when we're when we're searching for something. We want quick bullets. We want quick links, and that's why Google, you know, search works so well because you get these quick links, you get a quick excerpt summary, and you can scan down the page. And if you get to the bottom of page one, you might go to page two. You probably won't go much further than page two. And but that's 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 the world we live in. What's AI going to do to change that? Are they going to like produce the answer, the one answer for us to read and ignore all the other answers? No, nobody wants that. We we need trust. We need to yeah. we need to see sources of information, right? We need to yeah. more, most importantly, we need to scan um, the data. So SEO is going to be around for a while, maybe in some form forever. AI version of SEO, which Google is, yeah, now releasing. Um, but yeah, so that's one, one thing I, I wouldn't get too upset about at this yeah. point. Um, well, and as a local news publisher, I mean, you are the source of local news in your community. So as far as like AI taking that content and rehashing it back to someone, I mean, it's going to have to get around your paywall. There's yeah. a lot of barriers in front of, uh, AI. So I don't. I, I think going back to what we started with, just using it as a broad tool for research and, you know, obviously making sure that that research is accurate and you're still going to have to do the the legwork of city council meetings and all the right. things that come with being a local journalist, I'm right. afraid to say. <laughs> right. But, you know, there, there's a good point. Let's say you let's say you do city council meetings. Right. Which is a, which is great for local news and people are want to pay for it. Right. And you you can create a framework where you use AI to help produce the content. Right. Um, you know, uh, I don't know what the legality is on recording stuff and transcribing stuff, but you could use AI to, to build summaries off of off of uh, interviews for sure um, and things like that. And um, like let's say sports scores, right? Like another thing, like if you find, if there are pieces of content that are you're writing over and over again, it's repeatable approach. That's a great application for AI where you can produce content much more efficiently. You're still doing all the legwork, um, but AI is sort of helping you speed along the content creation yeah. uh, that you're inputting in. So good input, good output, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just checking my notes here. So we talked a little bit about um, search. Oh, and you know, there's always the nuclear option for you know, will will AI steal all my content? That's you know that that fear, um, and that's you can lock content down um, now. If AI steals content, which is which is starting to happen, I 
read about a, a publisher where that was a very, very niche publisher who was um, uh, also found out that there was a website that had essentially stolen his content and was rewriting the content. Um, you can always lock down your content. That the, the nuclear option where you you start you go back to the old model of like, okay, these are premium articles. We'll lock these down, or we'll just lock everything down. But of course, you're killing your ability to show up in search, and you're killing social sharing. It's not the option I would recommend. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it goes back to like when publishers worry about whether people are going to share logins with each other or right. whether they're going to clear their cookies and get around the paywall or they're going to change their IP address and get around the paywall. Like some of these things you just like have to accept as a, as a thing that will happen, but it just won't be the, it won't be the majority of people. Most people don't have time to mess around with that. Right. No, so. they don't. Um, you know, and you have like, as a publisher, you have a brand, you have an email list, you have your social channels, um, and you have engagement, right? You have the trust. So somebody just going to go to another site to read, rehash stuff. Yeah, maybe there'll be a few, but if you really want the source, like you mentioned earlier, you become the source of content then, and you, and your, your was reading an article this morning about like, what, why do people pay? Right. And, uh, I shared that with you and, mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's because you have a great mission. You're in, you know, independent journalism. Um, and um, we, uh, and and here's the pricing. Here's the simple pricing. And if we don't get your support, we won't survive. Like we need your revenue to survive. Like that, that's messaging that re resonates. That's the, you know, it, it, it's it's part of the engagement of the reader, right? And um, and we do want to support independent journalism. It's very, the, the data was very clear in the report that yeah. people want to support independent journalism. Yeah. All right, I got one last thing I just wanted to share before you wrap up um, about AI. And I, and I think um, if you haven't been using AI in your publication, uh, now's a really good time to start playing with it. It's 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 fun. Once you start, you know, just sign up, go to chat, just Google chat GPT, sign up. It's free. Sign up for a free account. Um, you might want to pay the 20 bucks a month and pay for the pro version, which gives you chat GPT four, which is quite good. And we'll let you do what I'm going to what I'm going to mention next. Um, but it'll give you a feel for how it all works and what how you you could put it um, put it. Um, in action for your publication. So one of the things that um, that we use it for, and this podcast is a great example of it, is we use it to uh, build articles on our blog. So here, we, here we're in the middle of the podcast, we're recording the podcast, uh, the video version and, and the audio version. And the workflow for us is um, we take the um, Take the video and put it on YouTube. That's fine. And then we then the podcast goes up on our, all the podcast channels. But uh, then we throw the audio into a tool called Descript, which translates the um, text, uh, um, doesn't translate the text, it produces the transcription <laughs> of all the text. <laughs> I think it can. It might actually be able to translate. I'm not sure. But this, anyway. This still all this jargon that we talk about. Yeah. Anyway, it's called Descript. Um, does a good job of, of um, a transcription. And of course, a raw transcription of a, an interview like this, uh, or, or, you know, uh, you might do or a podcast um, is pretty rough. Like it's hard to read. You can't really get through it. But we take a copy of that text, we throw it into chat GPT-4, and we ask it to write a summary of, um, of what we talked about in this. And it works great. A nice summary comes out. Yeah, gets a little editing. Sure, always always need to edit. And then it gets posted as an article along with the video, along with the podcast, uh, the audio. So if you're doing a lot of interviews, if you're doing video production in your publication, uh, you definitely need to get chat GPT-4 because you can, you can post long transcriptions into chat GPT-4 uh, longer than chat GPT-3. 
um, and then use you know use it some transcription software of your choice uh, to create those and and you will have nice summaries that you can publish along with your videos and why do I say all this well remember we talked about scanning right we're like we we are we get to a, an article and we realize that when people come and look at one of our articles on our blog you have lots of different people some will hey I'll watch the video some hmm, let me check out the podcast because I'm a I love podcasts and some will simply need to scan and probably a big chunk of it of, of visitors need to just scan some text to decide whether they're going to listen to the podcast or watch the video so that little summary it's a short paragraph um, lets them quickly read about what this podcast is about and then decide to uh, dig in deeper maybe subscribe for future podcasts but it's it's a critical element in um encouraging your readership to watch that video or listen to that interview or whatever it is and and it the workflow is very quick when you use uh, chat gpt for it okay <clears throat> i think i'm done anything else we want to want to add to ai I think that's it. Should we tell everyone that you and I both are AI at this moment, or should we leave that alone? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. So we are not. These, this is really us. <laughs> However, um, is it uh, starts for the rest of us? Uh, Rob uh, over there, he did a bit. Uh, he did a video on uh, where he. There is a service that that will watch a few clips of you talking. And it will it will then output oh, a bot of you talking. And it's it's a little eerie how it's not perfect. Like you can tell it's a bot, but it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that it's, it's a little so that kind of weirdness is coming. Yep. Anyway. All right, Tyler. Onward. Embrace AI, play around with it, and uh um apply it to your publication. It will help you. Catch you next time. Thanks for listening to the Paywall Podcast. If you'd like to get in touch to discuss subscription strategy, go to leakypaywall.com. See you next time.